Hello everyone. In the last presentation, we were discussing about the concepts related to the volumetrics of bituminous mixtures. We have derived various expressions that are required uh, during the mix design process and we have also understood the definition and the fundamentals of these volumetric parameters. Uh, I hope that by now you all are familiarized with most of the concepts that are required to solve a general mix design problem, especially the calculations involved during the mix design process. Uh, though we have not discussed specifically about the steps of any mix design process until now, but these concepts which we have learned, which we have discussed will remain same irrespective of any mix design uh, process we adopt. So, uh, today what we will do, we will try to solve a detailed problem and this problem has been made in such a way that if we are able to understand this problem and if we are able to solve this problem, we can expect that we will be able to um, solve any other problem uh, related to the uh, mixed design of bituminous mixtures. And this problem which we will be discussing today is basically drafted uh, by one of the research scholars and uh, I am really thankful to him. So, let us first see the problem and I will go slow in this presentation so that we can understand each and every step and in fact let us first try to understand the problem itself uh, and then we will try to think upon that which are the logical steps or that will be required to solve this problem in a systematic manner. So, the question uh, in front of us is that four aggregate gradations were chosen for the mixed design of asphalt mixtures. The aggregate gradations of these stockpiles are given below. So, I think it should be uh, just written as four aggregate stockpiles were chosen for the mixed design of asphalt mixtures and the aggregate gradation of these stockpiles are given below. So, you can see that we have four stockpiles here. The first stockpile uh, is designated as a 20 mm stockpile and this is the typical way we designate any stockpile. Uh, based on the maximum size of the uh, aggregate present. So, 20, this is a 20 mm stockpile, uh, this is a 10 mm stockpile, this is a 6.3 mm stockpile and this is a stone dust stockpile. So, we have 4 stockpiles here and we have the aggregate gradations in terms of percentage passing for these individual stockpiles. The next part of the question says that appropriate blending of the stockpile should be done to meet the requirement of the desired gradation as given below. So, this is the desired gradation. So, this gradation might have been given by this the highway agency that we have the lower limit and upper limit and then appropriate blending of the stockpiles which means these four stockpiles which we see on the left hand side is to be blended in such proportion that the final gradation should follow uh, these upper bound and lower bound limits. Okay. So, the next part of the question says that, so you can see that we have a uh, problem to solve here itself that is the first part will be the proportioning. Further the question says that the bulk specific gravity of each stockpile uh, and for each individual stockpile for coarse aggregate, fine aggregate and the filler uh, were determined in the laboratory and the results are given below. So, for each individual stockpiles, the coarse aggregate were separated or taken separately, the fine aggregates were taken separately and the filler that is material passing 75 microns were taken separately and each of the stockpile they have determined the specific gravity of the aggregates. Now, you can see there are few blank cells here. This is because uh, this 20 mm stockpile does not have any fine aggregate and filler content. Similarly, 10 mm stockpile does not have any fine aggregate and filler content. Similarly, the stone dust does not have any coarse aggregate content and that is why it is just left blank. And in fact, we have solved a similar problem previously, but this question is combining so many different aspects and then let us see that how step by step we can 
approach to uh, solve this question. Okay, so this was about the aggregates then the question says that mixes which means asphalt mixtures or bituminous mixes were prepared using 75 blows of Marshall compaction though as I said we have not specifically discussed about the steps involved in the Marshall mix design but let us say we have adopted a compaction process so that is an impact compaction so by now we know uh, that uh, we can have different types of compaction and the finally we will have some cylindrical mixtures which we prepare in the laboratory. So, using the Marshall compaction and giving 75 blows on uh, each side of the uh, specimen, we have prepared bituminous mixtures at different binder contents. So, the binder content chosen are 4.5 percent, 5 percent, 5.5 percent and 6 percent. So, all are at a gap of 0.5 percent. The theoretical maximum specific gravity, so as I say theoretical maximum specific gravity, so in the back of our mind I should uh, remember that this is indicating about GMM. So, the theoretical specific gravity of the sample was determined at 5 percent and this is to be noted here that only one binder content they have determined the uh, theoretical maximum specific gravity and it was found to be 2.516. This is the value which we got after laboratory measurement. The specific gravity of the asphalt binder is 1.02 all right. So, this is again one of the input. Further the question says weight in air, water and saturated surface dry condition of compacted asphalt mixture used to determine the bulk specific gravity of the asphalt mixtures are given below. This is what the question says that we have we, we prepare the sample as at 4 different binder contents. So, at all the binder contents when we have the compacted specimen. Uh, the weight in air of that specimen, the weight in water of those specimens and the saturated surface dry weight of those specimens are given here alright. So, these are the different weights uh, that we have recorded in the laboratory. Now, the final question is that we have to calculate different volumetric properties such as air voids, voids in mineral aggregates, voids filled with bitumen and percentage absorbed bitumen. So, these volumetric properties we have to calculate in fact at all the different binder contents at which we are preparing the mixture and then finally, we have to calculate the optimum binder content at 4 percent air void. Now, this last part of the question is something which we are yet to discuss, but till now very easily we will be able to calculate this optimum binder content. So, though we have not very explicitly defined the optimum binder content uh, in any mix design process, but you see it the question itself asks calculate the optimum binder content at 4 percent air void. So, the question says that at 4 percent air void whatever is the bitumen content that they are considering as the optimum binder content and we have to calculate it alright. So, this is the entire problem and you can see this is a big problem comprising of uh, so many parts in the question. So, let us move ahead and let us try to solve this question. So, in any mix design problem which we will do in the laboratory, the first part is always of course, after selecting the appropriate materials like aggregates and binders, the next important step or I consider that as the initial steps towards volumetric is to blend the stockpiles, is to find the specific gravity of the blended aggregate gradation and then further prepare the mixtures and determine other volumetric properties. So, the first step in the problem is that we do not know till now that in what proportions these stockpiles should be blended. So, that our final gradation should fall under the specified limit of the uh, highway specification which was given in the initial part of the question. And then the next part which we have to calculate. Uh, is the specific gravity of the combined blend all right so this is this is also something which we do not know so here again uh, someone can opt to use step 2 as step 1 that can be done but this is one way in which uh, i have tried to solve this uh, question that the first step is to calculate the percentage retained now the question is why we are interested in the percentage retained because in the question if you remember which I already showed you, we had the specific gravities of 
different sizes of aggregate which means coarse, fine and filler and then we had various stockpiles whose individual gradation in terms of percentage passing we knew. But using percentage passing we do not know that in individual stockpile what is the percentage of coarse aggregate, percentage of fine aggregate and percentage of filler. For example, if I go back to the question. Alright, so, this was the table which was given to you. So, this says percentage passing. So, it tells you about the gradation, but let us see this stockpile or this stockpile and this stockpile. Let us say 6.3 mm. Here you will see here uh, that we also we have fine aggregates uh, as well as we have coarse aggregates. So, first we have to find out that what is the proportion of coarse aggregate and fine aggregate in this stockpile and similarly in other stockpiles so that we can calculate the appropriate average specific gravity which about which we have already discussed previously. All right. So, here I am calculating percentage retained to estimate or to calculate the proportion of coarse aggregate and fine aggregate in and filler in individual stockpiles. So, uh, you see this is the gradation which is given to you. So, this is already known the one in black color. These are different stockpiles, stockpile 1, stockpile 2 stockpile 3 and stockpile 4. So, using percentage passing I can calculate percentage weight retained very easily. So, this is what I have done. Uh, this is just 100 minus this value. So, I get this and you deduct this, you get this, you deduct this, you get this. So, I am just calculating the individual percentage weight retained in each sieve. All right. So, I hope by now we understand uh, the, the calculation at least. So, I am not repeating that while solving this problem. So, you deduct, uh, you subtract this, you get this. All right. So, this is what I have done uh, and, and I have all the values in front of me. Similarly, for stockpile 2, stockpile 3 and stockpile 4. Okay. So, uh, for example, you can see here, this is 100 minus this, this is 100 minus 100, 100 minus 100, 100 minus 25.55. 25.55 minus 0 0.27, 0 0.27 minus 0 and so on. All right. So, again I hope uh, that you understand this calculation. So, now you have the percentage weight retained. Then using this percentage weight retained very easily we can calculate the percentages of coarse aggregate, fine aggregate and filler in each of the stockpile. So, I will just see percentage weight retained and I will calculate. For example, if you see stockpile 1, we only have the material which are uh, retained on the 4.75 sieve, nothing is passing 4.75 mm sieve. So, the coarse aggregate fraction is 100 percent and rest is 0 percent, 0 percent. Uh, similarly, uh, the 10 mm stockpile you can see in front of you. Uh, let us see 6.3 mm stockpile. So, you have 4.75 mm and then you have things here. So, 25.553 which is this plus this uh, are the total amount of fine aggregates and whatever remains that is 74.45 which you can see here is the amount of coarse aggregate. Similarly, if you see stone dust you have nothing above from here to here just add everything you will get the total amount of uh, fine aggregate and finally, 11.78 which is which you can see here is the percentage of filler in the stone dust stockpile. So, just uh, before taking the average, this part of the equation is already given to us that what is the specific gravity of individual sizes of aggregates in each stockpile. All right. So, this was given in the question. And then we will take the harmonic mean and we get uh, these values corresponding to different proportion. For example, let us see this this will be equal to, I am just repeating, uh, but we have already discussed everything here. 70.447 divided by 2.667 plus 25.553 divided by 2.662, all right. And we do not have any filler here. And similarly, you can do all the calculations. So, this is first calculation which we have done, the average specific gravity for each stockpile that is given to us. This is for individual stockpiles. Till now, we have not determined the specific gravity of the final gradation. But of course, we cannot determine it at this stage because we do not even know what is the final gradation because we do not know 
in what proportion we have to blend these individual stockpiles. And as we have to uh, arrive at a range of values that is upper bound and lower bound and we have discussed it in detail that there can be many solutions of blending these stockpiles. So, either you can do a trial and error method uh, for example, you can just use a simple excel sheet keep on changing the values of the proportion of individual stockpiles which you want to take in the final blend and calculate the percentage passing uh, each sieve or uh, each sieve size corresponding to that proportion alright. So, that is one method. Another method which is also a, a iterative process is to use uh, any uh, available software. For the example, we have discussed about the simple tool for aggregate blending where you get or the different possible ways in integral solutions for blending these stockpiles. We already did that exercise and then out of various different options which we got using this tab, we chose this proportion which was falling um, within the um, specification of upper bound and lower bound. So, you can see this was the specification which was given to us and the middle dashed line which you can see is the final gradation and it is within the limits. So, this is what we have chosen. We have chosen that we will not use any aggregate from the 20 mm stockpile because it is not really necessary. We will use 30 percent of 10 mm uh, aggregates, 20 percent of 6.3 mm aggregates and 50 percent of stone dust. So, this is what we have decided finally. Of course, there as I said there are various solutions to this and the designer can choose any of the uh, solution based on his comfort or his requirement. So, if you choose 0 percent of 20 mm, 30 percent of 10 mm, 20 percent of 6.3 mm and 50 percent on stone dust and do the calculation corresponding to each um, sieve, you will get this solution which is basically shown through this graph here. All right. So, this is the uh, percentage passing for the blended stockpiles for the combined stockpiles. Now, we know in what proportion we are blending this individual stockpiles and we also know for individual stockpile what is the average specific gravity. So, we will take another harmonic mean and we will calculate the specific gravity of the blend alright. So, this is what we are doing here. These values I have already shown you in the previous uh, slide the average specific gravity of each stockpile. So, therefore, the final average specific gravity is 2.673. Just remember here the moment you change these values, these proportions, the uh, specific gravity of the blend will change. Next step is to find the effective specific gravity GMM and GMB. So, how to do that? Because by now we also know that in order to calculate the volumetric parameters, we will require these specific gravities as an input. So, if you can again remember we have discussed uh, even in fact in the last presentation that GSE is a parameter which basically depends on the aggregate source. However, the formula of GSE, so I am just writing here the formula of GSE is 1 minus PB divided by 1 by GMM minus PB by GB. So, this was the formula. Uh, now, you see this is something which you have to understand here basically before you can think of doing what we are going to do. You know that we cannot measure GSE, so we have to calculate and for this calculation we need GMM. GMM can be measured in the laboratory and the question says here very clearly that they have determined the theoretical maximum specific gravity at 5 percent binder content. So, at PB equal to 5 percent, the value of GMM is given to us as 2.516. So, this we already know. So, let us use this input which is already given in the question to calculate the value of GSE corresponding to the GMM at 5 percent. This is what I have done. So, this value is given in the equation, only this is given in the question. Using this and the formula, I have calculated GSE, alright. So, let me write down the formula once again. Okay. So, this is the formula which you see here. So, PB is 5 percent, GMM is 2.516, GSE you calculate as 2.726. Now, for this aggregate source, 
and this particular binder which we are using in the mix design GSC is not going to change irrespective of any binder content. So, at all the other binder contents, so PB is known to us every time once PB is 4.5, 5.5 and then we have 6. So, using these 3 values of PB and using the value of GSE as 2.726, you calculate the value of GMM and uh, again GB has been given to you as 1.02 in the question, alright. So, what we have done here first using the GMM at 5 percent, we have calculated GSE and now using GSE and different PBs, we are calculating the value of GMM using the same formula. So, now you see we have the value of GMM at different binder contents. So, this is done because this is an important input to cal calculate other volumetric parameters. Now, what we will do? We will calculate GMB. So, calculation of GMB is easy because we, we have all the necessary inputs. So, what are the inputs required for GMB? We have the weight in air, we have the weight in water and we have the SSD. So, GMB is will be equal to weight in air divided by SSD minus weight in water. So, just do it for all the different binder contents and calculate the value of GMB which you see here just using the same formula weight in air divided by SSD minus weight in water, ok. So, GMB is also calculated. So, now we have GMM and GMB at all the different binder contents and we have the effective specific gravity uh, of the aggregate source we also have the average specific gravity of the final blend. So, we have almost all the specific gravities that are required to calculate the volumetric parameters. So, it is good. Now, what we will do if you again remember our derivations in the last presentation that we have calculate PBA which is the percentage of absorbed bitumen and the percentage of absorbed bitumen uh, just a recap uh, is uh, defined with respect to the weight of aggregates in contrast to the value of PB which is defined in terms of weight of the total mix. So, the formula for PBA is a function of I am not writing the formula here is a function of GB is a function of GSB and is a function of GSE. So, if you know all these 3 uh, values you can calculate the value of percentage of absorbed bitumen. So, you can calculate the percentage of absorbed bitumen. So, you can see this is GB into GSE minus GSB divided by GSE into GSB alright. So, this is 0 0.735. So, uh, the uh, percentage of absorbed bitumen is 0 0.735 percentage ok. So, I hope this is clear to you. We can finally move to calculate different volumetric parameters. Now, this becomes very simple because we have put in our efforts to determine all the necessary specific gravities that are required. So, at different uh, binder contents, since we have the value of different specific gravities, we can calculate air void. So, air void is dependent on GMM and GMB. So, this is the formula, all right. VMA is a function of uh, all right. I think this is the formula which we have discussed. So, using this formula again you can calculate the value of VMA and VFB is a function of um, VMA and air voids. So, again very simple it is VMA minus air voids by VMA. So, again using the formula you can calculate VFB at all the binder contents. We are done with all our calculation here as asked in the question and then finally, we can calculate the optimum binder content. So, the question is how do you calculate the optimum binder content? The question already said that calculate the optimum binder content corresponding to 4 percent air void. So, if we know the variation of air void with respect to binder content, we will just uh, plot it and then we will mark a 4 percent air void here and we will calculate that what is the corresponding binder content to achieve 4 percent air void. So, this is 5.4 percent and this curve we will discuss later when we discuss about mix design that with increase in binder content the air void usually decreases. And this is very obvious because we have some voids which we are filling with additional bitumen every time and so the amount of air void decreases. 
All right, so I hope that uh, this was pretty much clear to you and I also hope that by now uh, you are confident with the necessary uh, concepts that are uh, required to uh, understand and solve any volumetric related questions. I would not say mixed design related questions now because we are yet to discuss, but when I say volumetric related question, it also means that any mixed design related question because our mixed design presently relies mostly on the volumetric calculation. So, thank you everyone and in the next presentation, we will conclude the concepts on the uh, volumetric of mixed design by understanding the critical parameters uh, like voids in mineral aggregates, air voids and voids filled with bitumen. Thank you.